Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Standard, and today we're going to talk about split brains, which are one of the nastiest distributed systems problems that you might run into out in the wild somewhere. I'm actually making another YouTube video right now about a really awful split brain bug we just fixed in Akka.net. Uh, it's truly a pretty nasty and insidious issue, and it's one that not a lot of software developers may have come into contact with before. If you've done any work on fairly large distributed systems, you've probably been exposed to this at some point, but many people who watch the channel haven't. So we're going to go ahead and explain what a split brain is, uh, what problems it causes, how to recognize it, and then what you can potentially do about it using some Akka.net specific examples there. So this video should be pretty brief. So this is what a healthy network looks like. Now this style of network is what's known as a mesh network. This is how Akka.cluster operates, for instance. So every node has a direct connection to every other node. Mesh networks are ideal for low latency communication and like real time systems. Uh, the reason being is that every node has a direct line of communication to everybody else. So there's no need for let's say packets to make multiple hops between nodes and failure detection also happens really quickly in networks like these. So this is what Akka.cluster cluster looks like. Now, you can have a split brain with any network type. Uh, you could have it with the edge network, which is another type of peer-to-peer -peer network, or even a hierarchical client-server network could potentially have some. Um, the larger and more complex your network is, the greater the surface area for potential split brains. Now, what is a split brain in actuality? This is what a split brain looks like. And what makes them so insidious is that from the point of view of, let's say, your monitoring system, it actually looks like everything's healthy here. Uh, you look and you see that you've got six servers. All six servers appear to be doing their job. None of them are necessarily reporting errors. And it all kind of looks hunky-dory at the surface. Well, if you go a layer or two deeper, what you'll notice is that instead of one unified network, you can actually have several networks. In this case, we have two that are all effectively competing for traffic and trying to basically have different versions of the truth that are occurring inside this system. So a split brain can occur as a result of a hardware error. For instance, the rack that hosts nodes three, five, and six could have had a switch burnout that connected it to the rack that had the other three nodes on it. That could cause a split brain. But a lot of the times it's actually a software error where as a result of, oh, I don't know, a race condition with how the network gets formed or with some sort of error handling code that causes, let's say, these nodes to disassociate from the others, you can basically end up with these little different islands of connectivity that happen that aren't related to each other at all. Now, why this is problematic is that it causes a couple of consistency problems in particular. The biggest one being probably data corruption. The reason why this can corrupt data is that you end up with multiple variants of the truth inside your system. So imagine, for instance, you have uh, multiple, we'll use Akadana actors as an example. Let's say you have multiple actors. Each one is listening to sensor data coming back on like an MQTT topic. Uh, and so these actors are reacting to that sensor data based on what they observe. Well, if you have two different actors operating as competing consumers for that sensor's topic on the MQTT broker, now each of the two actors is only getting half of the information they used to have, and they're going to come up with potentially conflicting decisions about what to do with it. So this might result in things like operations that fail, where, for instance, you have two different actors that are both trying to maybe send an alert based off of that um, off of that data that's coming in and the alert might get fired by one half of the split brain and then cleared by the other one. It can kind of depend obviously on the nature of how the split brain occurred, but this would create a lot of disruption and chaos inside the software system. And that's basically the result of a data consistency and corruption error created by split brains. The other problem that you're going to run into is unpredictable system behavior. You know, no one designs and tests the system unless they're intentionally doing it. Uh, to be able to go ahead and handle multiple instances of, let's say, a single source of truth. Uh, by its very nature, there's only meant to be one source of truth in that system. And now when you suddenly have two of them, the way your system uh, may perform isn't necessarily going to be up to your specifications. So this represents a lot of problems potentially for developers that are trying to operate a decent sized network software. How we deal with split brains in Akka.net, so Akka.cluster, Cluster, which is our library for being able to build these high availability, you know, sort of applications, 
it, it has the ability to circulate gossip back and forth between all the various nodes in the cluster. And we've got some YouTube videos on that that I'll link to in the description. But we have the ability to essentially propagate gossip about how the cluster is operating, which nodes are available, and which ones are not at any given time. So we have this sort of built-in mechanism for socializing that data across the network. What will end up happening in the event of a network split in Aka.net is let's say we have a clean partition where these two nodes, nodes three and six, are suddenly not able to talk to the other four nodes in the cluster, maybe as a result of a, oh, I don't know, a software error. Maybe this Kubernetes node can't reach the other two Kubernetes nodes that are running in the cluster anymore. What will end up happening is now we have two leaders. This is where the split kind of first occurs. We have the original leader of the first cluster, and then the leader election algorithm is going to run in the second cluster as soon as it detects that the previous leader is now unreachable. Well, once that happens, we have this piece of code called a split brain resolver. It's truly a distributed algorithm in the sense that one half of it is going to run on network partition A, and the other one's going to run in all the other network partitions. So they're all going to run independently from each other because they can't communicate back and forth. But the heuristic that the split brain resolver uses by default is it's going to notice that the majority of nodes are available in the partition that I'm in right now. The split brain resolver runs on each of the leaders. So node one's going to say, we used to be a six node cluster. I have two unreachable nodes. They've been unreachable for at least 20 seconds. I'm going to simply kick them out of the cluster and any functionality or state that was deployed on those two nodes, we're going to rehome that and reallocate it on one of the other four existing nodes inside the system. Simultaneously, while well, that's running on node one, node three, the leader of our little partition here is going to say, whoops, I am in a partition that only has two out of the previous six nodes. Therefore, I'm probably on the losing side of this partition. Therefore, I am going to shut myself and everyone else in my partition with me down. That way, we should end up with a single unified partition, even though it's a smaller size than it was before. That'll allow us to avoid these data corruption and data, data contamination and consistency problems. So these nodes will down themselves, gradually shut down. So that's what a split brain is, and that's how we try to resolve it in Naka.net. This strategy, by the way, can be configured. We also have systems like the ability to use a distributed lock. That's another with a third party, let's say, data system. So for instance, we can use a Kubernetes custom resource definition or an Azure blob storage record. We can use tools like that for being able to do leasing as well. Leasing slash locking. They're kind of same idea, distributed locks. Um, and essentially what would happen in that environment is whichever system is able to grab the lock first, I uh, guess, to make decisions about who stays up and who stays down. Um, so that's another way you can try to resolve split brains potentially. So that's the basics of split brains. I figured I'd just go ahead and make a quick video, kind of giving you some conceptual background on this topic here. Hopefully you don't have to deal with this in your software systems, uh, but please stay tuned for our video about how we uh, went ahead and solved a really nasty set of split brain issues with Aka.net itself. We'll be publishing that soon. So please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.